Hello again, this is PC Delta Link, back with more of our Enigmatica 2 Let's Play Normal Mode, and this is episode 79. Okay, before we start today's episode, I have to make a small announcement regarding uh, Minecraft itself, really. The Twitch launcher. I think I mentioned this in an update video a while back that the Curse Forge, the people who do the Minecraft mod packs, are leaving the Twitch launcher, and they are moving to Overwolf. So, when I jumped on today to get this episode done, Twitch had the announcement on there that CurseForge will be leaving that platform, the Twitch platform, on November 30th, 2020. So, by the time this episode goes up, that should be... Uh, what, what is today? That should be about two or three days away from the time this episode is live. So... I'm just going to have everything backed up. I think everything will be okay. I already have Overwolf downloaded. Um, I've already installed the CurseForge app on it. It seems to have just grabbed everything from my Twitch folder and thrown it in there. So I believe everything will be fine. It won't cause any problems to transition to it. But just want to let you guys know about that. So I don't anticipate anything, but yeah, I want to let you guys know anyway. All right, so today, what are we going to do? We have a lot of stuff we're going to do today. You remember at the end of last episode, we had kind of tried to make the uh, Mantle of the Stars armor. And our Starlight Altar did not have near enough power to do that. So, there's a couple things we can do to get more power to our Starlight Altar at this point. One of which is creating a Collector Crystal. So you can, once you get to, really it's the previous altar you could do this on. But you can create Celestial, or Celestial collector crystals using some stardust some resonating gems and some illumination powder and an attuned rock crystal so we're gonna do that we're just gonna grab one i did go and grab some more of these between episodes now i don't believe the purity matters for creating a collector crystal so we're just gonna grab a i'll grab a Kind of a crappier purity, 49%. Sorry, we just need four stardust. I already had that in my inventory, that's fine. Um, illumination powder I've already got over there, and resonating gems I've already got some. Oh, here's four more. We'll take those. Sorry. Let's head over to the altar. Okay, I do have a chest I moved over here as well that we're going to be using today. So you can see I have quite a few items in here for us to mess around with today. Okay, so to craft this, you need your resonating gem in the corners, your illumination powder on the left and right side, and the stardust on the upper and lower. And then you take your rock crystal and put it in the middle. But you notice, oh, nothing's happening. That's because it has to be an attuned rock crystal. It doesn't matter what constellation, it doesn't matter what you attune it to, you just have to have it attuned to something. So just take your crystal and throw it on the attunement altar. Just whenever you have a constellation on here and let it do its thing. Which takes a minute or so. It's not too bad though. The sound on this is really cool. I love listening to it. There we go. Okay, now we have our crystal attuned tune to Armara. So, we'll come back over to our table here, and we'll just put it right in the middle. And you see there's our collector crystal on the right-hand side of the table. So let's right-click it and get it. There we go. They're quite big, as you can see. So, all right, there's our collector crystal. Oh, it does have purity and size. Okay, never mind. Ignore what I said. That does make a difference. Um, <laughs> well, heck. So, we probably made one that's not very good. Okay, but still, to demonstrate this, it'll be fine. And I can just I can show it off this way. It's, it's fine. So, right, we're going to put this a little bit above... Put it, yeah, right here should be good. Yeah, we'll just put it right there. Now, I believe you can pick these up. Yes, you can. 
Because the ones that are under the altars that you, you know, saw when you started the mod, kind of, you can't pick those up. If you try to mine them, they just break. But the ones you craft yourself, you can keep them and use them as you see fit. So, alright, now, as you would expect from a celestial crystal, or a collector crystal, this does generate starlight, and we can use our linking tool to link it to the altar. And you can see that is that did increase our starlight available at the altar just slightly. Not a whole lot, but yeah, you can see the little beam connecting it. So yeah, that does provide a little bit more power. Now, something else you could do with these collector crystals, and some people build their original like altar setup near one of the underground collector crystals from one of the, you know, starting altars if they can't find a good area of starlight because you can use the linking tool to link with them and get a little bit of extra starlight. But it still has a distance factor, but there's and it may not be in the most accessible area, but there's a way to get around that that we haven't had to use yet, but we are going to go ahead and craft them today. So that would be, I believe it's under is it exploration? Nope, one more. Attunement. Here we go. These crystal lenses. So these can be used to basically bend starlight and aim it at a different spot. So these are not too bad. It's too ruined marble, too engraved infused wood. We'll get to that in a minute. Gold ingot, any crystal, and then three glass lens and two aquamarine. So we've got all this handy right here. Three lenses, two aquamarine, two gold. This is the crystal we're going to be using for these lenses. 400 size, purity. Cutting does not matter for this part. So purity does matter because the purity determines how well the starlight passes through the lens. You know, if you have like a cloudy lens, it's not going to pass the starlight very well. And then the size actually determines how many of them you craft with one crafting operation. So we should get multiple of these because we're using a max size rock crystal of 400. So let's go ahead and craft this. And of course, I forgot the recipe already. All right, we need our engraved infused wood. So I got to show you guys how to get that. So that's back at the base. So let's run back over there real quick. Now, we've made infused wood previously with this was just, you know, chucking oak wood plant blocks or any really any main wood blocks that just can't be planks into liquid starlight you can just place a bucket of liquid starlight in the ground and throw them in there to get the uh engraved planks you could place your infused wood on the crafting tail to get infused wood planks which placing them in this pattern will get ye engraved infused wood which is what we need now we should only need one of these so that really should be all i need so we're just going to dump that back in there Oh, and we're getting to be toward uh, daylight, so let's fix that real quick. Let's head back to Moonrise. We'll head back over to the Starlight Altar while that's happening, get the recipes up. It might have enough to do it, but I don't know. Sorry, we need our ruined marble in the corners. That part I do remember. Okay. The engraved infused wood goes here. Gold ingot here. Glass lenses to aquamarine and then our crystal and you can see we can craft it already so let's go ahead and do that let's grab our wand and we'll see how many we get from a max size rock crystal uh we got five that's actually pretty nice so and of course celestial crystals can have a higher size limit. I believe they go up to 900 instead of 400, so it'd be interesting to see how many you get from those. Now, this more so applies when you're further away from your altar, and you need to, like, say you need to pass the starlight around a corner. You could place a lens here, place a lens here, and direct it toward the altar. So we're going to actually link this with the lens. Oh, but it's still linked with the altar as well. Um, I don't know how to stop it from linking to something without destroying it. So. And the other thing now we can do is we can link the lens to the altar. And you see the lens will turn toward the altar and direct the starlight toward it. 
So that just kind of demonstrates how you can use these lenses. Something else you can do, and we haven't gone into this either, really. Oh, I, oh, you can link the lens to a block, which I did not mean to do that. <laughs> um, okay, let's go back to that. There we go. All right, let's put our engraved infused one in here. There are actually different types of uh, lenses you can place on these lenses, which is kind of confusing, but let me show you. So let me, I believe we need to go to Constellation. Yes. See here we have colored lenses. Now these can be placed on those lenses we just created, and they all have different effects. So like this one is Ignition. This will actually set fire to anything that passes through the beam of light it puts out. This lens is the break lens, and it will break blocks that are placed in front of it. And it just goes on. See, this one's just damage. You could use that for a mob farmer sign. Growth, which could be interesting to play around with on a farm. Uh, regeneration. Push. You can push things away. So yeah, you have multiple different lenses. So we'll go ahead and we're going to make the regeneration lens just for fun here. So we need two aquamarine, two stardust, a gas tier, a diamond, and a glass lens. And all that should be right here, yeah. Okay, I'm just kind of... Let me... Oh, why did it go out of there? Hmm. Okay, gas tier above. Glass lens in the middle, diamond. Aquamarine, and then... Okay, yeah, I had that right. Okay. Let's see if I can do this correctly. Yes, we can. There we go. So there's our regeneration lens. Let's go ahead and craft it. Okay. We have a color lens. Now, I believe all you have to do is right-click it onto it. Yeah, there we go. And you notice the beam turns pink. And I believe it is still passing starlight, so I believe that is still increasing the starlight the altar receives. But now if you walk into it, here's our current effects. We have toughness and strength. And we should get regeneration if we stand in it. Do we not? We should. Can I link it to a block instead? And then... Well, heck. I don't know why that's not working. I would think that would be working. But I am not getting regeneration. Weird. Hmm. I don't know, guys. I'll have to do some checking between episodes to figure out what's up with that. All right, so to take the lens out, let's go ahead and link this back up to the altar again. To take it out, I believe you can shift right click with an empty hand. Let's find out. Yes, you can. So there we go. There we got our colored lens back. And we're just going to put this in the chest right here. So all right, next thing I'm going to cover real quick is, you know, you can store your constellation paper in here now. We have found a few more constellations between episodes. We actually don't have too many left. We now have, for our more obscure constellations. I think we already had Horologium. But we also have Lucerna, Gelu, Mineralis, Vorux, and Pelotrio. But there are a few others we have in here. And we're having a hard time finding altars with more blank constellation paper. But thankfully, you can actually craft individually the constellation papers. If you can't find them. And they all have different recipes. So... And they're all made on the iridescent altar. Like, here's Decidia, here's Armara, here's uh, Vichio. So we're going to start with the... Where is it? That's Vorux. We're going to start with Alcara right here. So this is made with four nether, five nether wart, two stardust, feather, any black dye of any kind, soul sand, coal... Ender Pearl and Parchment. Now we have not made Parchment yet, but this is also from Astral Sorcery. And this is pretty simple to make. It's just four paper with an aquamarine, 
and you can craft that either at you know a starlight crafting table luminous crafting table or just a regular crafting table so we've got that right here so I think I should be able because these should have the functionality of all the lower tiers so I should be able to make this here yes I can there we go so we got our four parchment so now it's getting to be uh I'm going to fast forward to the next uh, moonrise while this goes on. That way I know we have enough time to do this. Nope, we're not. There we go. There we go. Sometimes you got to be standing on the middle of that to teleport. Okay. So let's see here. Here's our nether wart. Coal, ender pearl, soul sand. We also need Stardust, which we've got here. Now, this is pr I think this is the first time I've actually done a recipe that requires the Iridescent Altar, and it's somewhat unique way to craft things. Sorry, we need our four Nether Wart in the middle, or in the altar itself. And I need the feather and the black dye, which I don't have on me there in the chest here. Feather. Oh, come on now. Black dye. There we go. Feather, black dye. Okay, we need a little bit more. It knows the recipe. You can see the little secondary blue bar here. And it's going to have that shortly for us. Okay, there we go. That is the constellation paper. So now we're going to craft it. And make sure before you do this that around your altar, whoops, around your altar you do have any of the items outside the table here that you do have enough uh, spectral relays within this altar area to place the items needed. So let's go ahead and craft it. Now, if you watch these spectral relays, oh, see the nether wart appeared above one? So go ahead and place the nether wart. And as the items appear, whatever one it asks for, just put it there. And that's how crafting works on this thing. So there's our soul sand. And coal. There you go. And that should be done in just a moment now, because that's everything. Isn't that cool how that looks? The streams connecting to the spectral relays and stuff. And there we go. We've got our drawing of Alcara. So that's all there is to it. Yeah, so it's really not too difficult. Whoops. So we'll store Alcara in here. We'll go ahead, we, we'll make one more constellation paper since we've got the items to do so here. So this one, I believe, is... Ulteria. So yeah, star metal, and then our stardust, diamond, blaze rod, leather, all that jazz. So let's go ahead and get one more feather. Ink sac. We've got our stardust and everything. Get our parchment in the middle. Stardust. Ink sac feather. Star metal. Okay. And now... Yeah, that should be good to go. So let's go ahead and craft it. We'll just add stuff as it wants it. Oh, there's our star metal. The leather. diamond and then this one will be blaze rod there we go yeah the colored beams look so amazing oh and the sparkles on the altar just match the colors too I just noticed that's cool alright and then we got Altaria constellation oh that's a weird one 
Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, next thing. So we have our collector crystal, as you saw, and that is giving a little bit of power to the altar, but not a whole lot. But there's a way we can get a lot more power. We could get a celestial collector crystal. Now, for some reason, I can never remember where this recipe is in the uh, book itself. <clears throat> I haven't had much luck with that unless it's... No, because see, that's that and... Yeah, like if I go back to um, Constellation here. Because like this shows the recipe for the Collector Crystal. It's the exact same for the Celestial Crystal, just with the Celestial Crystal instead. But I swear this was in the book somewhere and now it's not. But see, this is what we're going to craft. So this is an apparatus for the Celestial Crystals to give a lot more power to our Iridescent Altar. Or any altar, really, but in this case for our iridescent altar. You notice this does have liquid starlight in it. This requires eight buckets of liquid starlight around it. And you can see here's our recipe hovering over the star, the collector crystal, chiseled marble, ruined marble, yeah, marble, engraved marble. Now it says five engraved marble, but if you look you only see four here. The fifth one, and I've already built it here, the fifth one is right here. It's under the pillar in the middle. So we're going to head back to base, and we're going to grab, well, if we're going to stop the rain, this is the main reason I'm over here, get out of here. And once that does, we'll also fast forward to the next moonlight, moonrise. And now that we know that purity does affect these, we're going to go ahead and grab a 96% purity celestial crystal. There we go. Let's go ahead and start to the next moonrise. There we go. Okay, so let's see here. We need four illumination powder and we're good. Let's get our resonating gems in the corners as usual. Our illumination powder. Come on. Then our Stardust. All right, it has to be attuned. So we need a Constellation real quick. If that would be so kind as to... Uh, do we not have... Oh, yeah, watch us not have one available tonight. That looks like Dissidia right there. Well, we need an attuned crystal of some kind. I'll be back with you guys in a few minutes once we actually have a constellation up on our attunement table here. Okay, Armara's popped up on here again, so we're just going to make this an Armara crystal. Because why not? Because I don't think it really matters when you're making these collector crystals what they're attuned to. I don't think that makes any difference at all. It just has to be attuned to something. Oh, come on, give me the thing. There we go. Oh, no, not what I need. Okay, there we go. There's our celestial crystal. Let's go ahead and craft that. So I'm gonna need this real quick. Let me, uh, there we go. Okay. This shouldn't take too long. Beautiful little crystal. Alright, so let's take note of our starlight. So I believe this little... You can see the it's slowly increasing as the night gets closer to midnight. But you can see it ends right below this block I'm highlighting right now. That's kind of where it seems to end currently. So let's see how much more we can get out of this with this little setup. Now, these have to be floating one block above the structure you built. So that's why we had to do that. So now 
It is active, but I believe it still has to be linked. Yes. So let's go ahead and right click and we'll link to the altar. And <laughs> the bar is maxed out. <laughs> okay. So, since we have the bar maxed out, that means we can craft our Mantle of the Stars. I did not think I was going to... I, th I w had the... Uh... Oh, I didn't hold shift long. You have to wait until you're over there. My bad. I uh, did not think that that was going to fill that up completely. I was ready to... I actually have a second one ready to go that I was planning to build. As you can see, I actually have in this chest, or not in the chest, it's in my backpack. I already built a celestial crystal here. Collector crystal. So, and also this is the supplies for another one of those. So yeah, we were ready to build the second one if need be. I was going to replace this little setup here with it. So, okay. Let's, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Let's get our... I'm going to have to look this up again because I do not remember the recipe. But let's go ahead and get our Mantle of the Stars. Because now we have enough to do that. Okay, above it. Okay. Resonating. Stardust. Illumination powder. Okay. Illumination powder. Resonating. Stardust. Okay, yes, we can make it. Now we just got to make sure we have the items necessary to craft it. So, let me see what its other ingredients are. So, we need Ender Pearl, Stardust, Star Metal, and a Feather. A feather I can do. The rest we're going to have to go back to base to get. So, let's head back to base. Okay, star metal. Ender pearl, stardust, star metal, and a feather. Alright, one ender pearl, please. Okay, let's go craft this thing. We'll just fly back over there this time. Oh, quit selecting them. <laughs> okay, we should be good to go. So let's go ahead and craft this. And we'll be ready to add whatever it needs. Feather. Ender pearl. Stardust. And the star metal. There we go. And there we have it. We have our Mantle of the Stars. Now I'm going to go ahead and take off my Draconic Arm real quick so we can get a look at this. And also see what kind of defense it offers. Okay, that's not bad for one piece of armor. Sadly, you, there's not like a full set. You know, you can't get like a helmet and all that stuff. I don't know what this 80% Chaos Resistance is. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. But still, that looks pretty cool. How do I... Is it F5? Yeah, F5. Yeah, I love the cape. I love how it looks. Very cool armor. So, something that this armor offers... I'll go ahead and put our uh, other stuff back on for the moment. Is that this armor can be attuned to various constellations. You remember how I'd shown that you can place like an attuned crystal in here to... You know, get the constellation to appear in the table... Well, that's how this goes. So, like, see here, you can, with the Iridescent Altar attuned to Dissidia, you can create a Dissidia mantle. Now, I believe you can change this later as you see fit. You can attune it to different constellations. But the armor also has different perks depending on what constellation you have it attuned to. So, like, let's look at Dissidia here. If you go to your constellations tab on the right hand and you go to Dissidia, 
And then you scroll to the right. So this is how to create the constellation paper if you need it. But then here you have mantle effect. And it tells you what the mantle does when it's infused with this constellation. So like this one. Mantle will draw strength from your enemy's blows, empowering your own against them. Once hit, the warrior gains a portion of the damage taken as additional damage to be dealt with each hit. That's actually kind of cool. So yeah, some of these have really nifty buffs they can give your Mantle of the Stars. Protective barriers completely deflect attacks for as long as the barrier remains. Let's look at Vichio. Um, eases the burn on your travel, reducing weight to ride... Oh, it lets you glide like you have an Elytra. Elytria, I'm not sure how to pronounce that word, honestly. So that's kind of cool, too. So yeah, this is very nice little armor. What's a Vorcio do? Destructive potential, break down walls with ease, and severely damage hordes of enemies when one of them dies from your hand while in proximity to others. That actually sounds cool, too. All right, so something else I can do. I know we're getting close to our... Oh, I just... We're over our time limit. Um... <laughs> There's one thing I do want to show off real quick right before we end here. Is that I have gained a couple perk levels, and I want to show you kind of how that works and how it looks. So I need to be Nightfall real quick, because our perks um, that we're attuned to, the city, it requires us to kill enemies to gain experience. So we just need to find some enemies real quick to kill, so we're just going to wait around for a second. Some enemies should spawn for us somewhere. Anytime. Really? <laughs> ah, there's a volunteer. I might have to kill a few of these to finish this, but when you level up, whatever method you have to use to level up for your chosen attuned constellation, you'll notice a the level bar will appear in the left hand, upper left hand of the screen. So that will tell you, there you see, right there, it says four. So we just hit level four, and that tells us that we gained a perk point. So now we're going to go to our little perk tree, and we're going to spend a couple of these. So let's go ahead and we'll do increased projectile damage. And so we have two perk points left. We'll go ahead and do precision. And now I still have not taken the time to look and decide where I'm going to go on this tree yet, so we're going to hold off for now. But yeah, I just wanted to show you guys kind of spreading on the perk tree and then how it looks when you do level up. I still say that level bar looks so much like Skyrim, for crying out loud. <laughs> so all right, next episode we'll do a little bit more. I mean, we still got more stuff to cover in Astral Sorcery. We're not done yet. So... I'll see if I can figure out what was going on with the lenses, or I might have to do some testing to figure out why that wasn't giving me regeneration. And this should make a difference, but... Oh, wait, I don't have the lens in it right now. Give me the... Yeah, I don't know what's up with that. Oh, one last thing. Sorry, I keep forgetting little tiny details. One last minor thing. So, last episode, 78, I'd said I had a world download for you guys, and it's still up, of course. I now have two chests in here. So we have my inventory, where I will dump everything that I'm carrying in my inventory, and also that I'm wearing will be dumped into this chest. And then anything that I have in my satchel will be in this chest here. I don't know if satchels are standalone items or if they're like tied to character save data so i just want to go ahead and empty it so what's in here is what was in here at the time so those two chests are in the base ready to go and something else i should mention although if you've been watching the series from the beginning you already know this but i believe the world spawn if you're coming in here with a brand new character i think you spawn somewhere right around here give or take right in here should be pretty close to this village and then you can just make your way over to the base, which is not too far of a walk. So yeah, that stuff will be there for you guys. So yeah, I think that's it. So thank you all very much for watching. I hope you all have a great day, and I will see you guys next time.